So as we were closing out last year, I went ahead and started a deep dive series on the Kopi wiki page. And this was purely just for the random pleasure of speculating on the way things are worded within this document, but evidently the series was started at the perfect time because to kick off 2023, Konocopius rolled out a whole slew of new updates. So before we can actually continue with the rest of the series, I have to make sure that I go back and cover all of the new information that was released in the last section. And let me tell you, it is some breaking stuff. Let's get started. Welcome to Lake and Crypto. My name is Josh and I'm here to help you find digital liberty in the complex world of crypto. Remember, anything you hear in any of my videos is not to be taken as financial advice. Do your own research and own your own decisions. Okay, so if I could just ask projects to stop saving their announcements for the beginning of a new year, then maybe I'd actually be able to cover it all. But in this case, I'm not mad. I'll make an exception simply because we have been waiting for this kind of information for months. Our gaming officer in the Knights Guild nearly had an aneurysm with the level of excitement that he was displaying about these updates, and I see why. And even though these updates are easily the biggest updates that we've gotten so far in 2023, it's pretty cool that the official Cornucopius team isn't the only one that is making big moves at the start of 2023 to drive forward this project. If you're not following Scruffy from the Corn Mafia, he's out there doing regular live streams to get prepared for when Cornucopius launches just later this year. He was kind enough to have me on as a guest, as well as Paterai, who is also in the leadership with the Knights Guild, so at least the Knights had a decent gamer in the mix. And the Knights are definitely out there doing stuff too. They just recently released the Knights Guild white paper, which you can see a review for over on their official YouTube channel. There was also the official MOU announcement to establish a partnership with Anvil to help develop the NFT tech side of things for the Knights. And one of the developments that I find most exciting, partly because this has a lot to do with some of the stuff that I talked about in last week's video about my goals for 2023 for this YouTube channel, I'll link that up there if you haven't seen that yet. In parallel with my own personal efforts to reach out to non-English speaking communities, the Knights Guild has opened up applications for bilingual guild leaders. As we learned at the Cardano Summit, Cornucopius already has a pretty well-established community in Brazil, so the Knights Guild wants to be ready to support gamers all over the world. So if you're somebody that speaks, writes, and reads English and another language, let us know, we'd love to connect. And now, let's get into this thing because I'm dying to unpack it. Basically, everything that I wanna break down in this particular video is actually just on this single page on gameplay. That's in part because there's quite a lot to break down here, but also the rest of the updates that were made in the other parts of the Kopi Wiki page, we'll get to that in the rest of this series. On the one hand, as a gamer, I think I've mentioned this before, I'm not really a huge fan of uh, character need systems, at least not extensive ones that require you to sustain against exhaustion, for example. When I play video games, I don't wanna get tired. I wanna be friggin' Master Chief and have enhanced physical capabilities. I wanna be able to actually play the game for four hours straight. And actually we did play games for four hours straight on Scruffy Scream last week. But I think this concept of a character needs system, an extensive one, in the context of a play to earn game or play and earn game, I think this concept has kind of grown on me. I used to have this perception, which I now know is completely false, that consumption in games is at odds with earning. But if I'm being completely honest with myself, I probably just didn't want to be the one that was consuming so that I could use that little bit of extra resources to turn around and make something out of it. I suppose that's the entrepreneurial spirit. But the reality and mindset that I've had to be very intentional about trying to embrace, and you've all seen me do this in my content over the past year and a half, that mindset is that real world economies, they need to be emulated in digital economies. And in real world economies, 
Consumption indicates need. Need motivates effort, and effort fulfills need, or at least it can fulfill need. It's the circle of life. All of that is basically just to get down to the realization that now the character needs system in Cornucopius is actually going to be quite extensive, and it is going to be beneficial, economically speaking. On this particular point about holding your breath underwater, I don't want to sound self-absorbed, as if anything that the Cornucopius team has anything to do with what I say or what I do on this channel. But also, I kind of feel like I'm being messed with here. The ability to hold your breath underwater. This point was released right after my last Kopi Wiki page video where I talked extensively, unreasonably, about underwater societies. Now, let's definitely put some effort here into keeping ourselves grounded, and by we, I do mean me. The concept of holding your breath underwater in a video game is not at all an uncommon concept. But also, what's the point? If not, to be able to get to some kind of underwater district. Either Cornucopius is actually building their own version of the lost city of Atlantis, or there probably is actually a pretty reasonable reason for the purpose of this in-game mechanic. We just haven't seen it yet, and it's probably just convenient timing. I think. On this next point, we're actually going to talk about some real value the Cornucopius is bringing, because I don't, I don't actually have any unreasonable speculation to pull out of this one. I just want to point out what this one communicates about how geniusly intricate and well thought that the Cornucopius game is shaping up to be. Up to this exact point in the industry, I have held to, consciously, the belief that in-game t-shirts and any NFTs that represent that, that's not impressive if the only value proposition that it brings to the table is the brand that is on the front side of it. But you know what I am impressed by is the utility mechanics that provide an actual reason to buy in-game clothing. This point right here is actually, I think, a pretty perfect representation of how utility should translate into NFTs. And what's really helpful is that we can actually look at the real-world fashion industry as an example to demonstrate this. If we didn't need to wear clothes, and I realize that that's a weird way to start a sentence, but brands like Gucci and Louis Vuitton, just an example, they would not be nearly as successful as they are today. Because the need that clothing provides is what drives the economic sustainability of the fashion industry, and it's innovation on top of those basic needs that basically adds any additional value propositions on top, but it does start with need. This is a very common controversy in the NFT community, and it manifests itself as the whole utility versus art sort of debate, but it feels like so many people in the NFT industry are trying to jump to be the next Gucci of the industry. But it will continue to be true that popularity and hype will always be outlasted by need. Always. Anyways, there's your daily dose of capitalist propaganda for the day. Let's move on. It is unclear just from this point alone how vending machines are going to interact with Cornucopius. We're not totally sure if they're just going to be autonomous objects that are spread throughout zone lands and hangars wherever the team chooses to put them. But if I were a gambling man, which is a debatable point for anybody that's in crypto, basically, I would be inclined to suggest that players will be able to buy, use, and place their own vending machines. In my very first dedicated Cornucopius video, this was a thing that I suggested as something that I would like to see in the Cornucopius metaverse. And Rob told me at CNFTCon 
that they did end up pulling one of the ideas from one of my videos and, and ended up implementing it into the game. So, I, Rob, I gotta know, is this the thing? It's killing me. Let me know in the comments. And just to further develop upon this idea, I think that it would actually be kind of cool if you could buy land, or I guess more specifically, buy space within the zone hangars. If you caught last week's episode of Kopi Cafe, Rob and Josh actually talked about some new information that we had about the nature of hangars and sort of the in-between pathways of what that looks like between the hangars and the actual zone experience. And in there, they had mentioned something about shops, or at least I think that they did. I kind of imagined sort of like an airport-like experience there. I actually think that it might be kind of cool to sell little vending machine-sized spaces as NFTs that correspond to different spots in different hangars. That way, people would be able to build vending machine businesses just like they do in the real world. If you're one of those people that watches all of that business development content on the entrepreneurial channels on YouTube, you probably know that vending machines over the past decade have actually been a pretty solid lucrative business. And in that endeavor, they're usually targeting spaces that have a lot of foot traffic. And you know what is guaranteed to get a lot of foot traffic? The front door to the zone land. But just know that if Cornucopius does decide to develop upon this idea, in this way at least, those spaces, the hangar NFTs, should not be cheap. To put an actual vending machine into an actual airport would cost $1,500 in rent easy. At last time I checked, the industry standard was like $200 a month to $2,000 a month. And you gotta remember that in this particular case, we're not talking about a physical airport that you have to go to. We're talking about an openly, globally accessible, free-to-play world that people will be required to go through in order to get what they're going. There's definitely gonna be a lot of foot traffic through there. And I don't mean to spend too much time trying to ground your expectations here, but I kind of feel responsibility to if I'm gonna bother to make the suggestion at all. So just don't be surprised if the mint price of these small little NFT spaces are minting for twice the price of like copious custom dome lands. That does kind of depend on the total supply of these spaces, but don't be surprised. This point here is really interesting because it's, it's not new information. This is different information. Cornucopius has changed from what they said before about the result of fainting returning you back to your home bubble. Now, instead, you will be delivered to an in-game medical facility. We don't really get much more information than that. I partially... <clears throat> we don't really get more information than that, but I am expecting that there will likely be at least one of these medical facilities in every cornucopious zone. And let me tell you, I think this makes way more sense than being sent all the way back to your home bubble. I was actually worried about that version of this mechanic because I, it seemed like there was some potential to cause a heck of a lot of unnecessary inconveniences for players. Like, just as an example, what would happen to your bubble jet? Maybe you have a second bubble jet, a lot of us do at this point anyways, but there's no indication that we know of about being able to get two bubble jets from point A to point B in Cornucopius. Since it's not written anywhere, I can't really expect that you'll be able to do that, so even if you do own two bubble jets, you'll have to take the freaking bus back to the zone land. Whether or not that particular potential logistical issue would be a thing, it just seemed like a pretty severe punishment and add a heck of a lot of time for somebody to get back to where they were and I don't know, I like this better. 
just as a start, we get to name them cool things. Maybe they might end up being simple, like Esperanza Medical Center, or maybe we get a little bit more creative with it and St. Hoskinson's Memorial or Lumbridge Hospital. Bonus points to anyone who got the reference on that one. But I think an even bigger potential value that could be added to these centers, these would be great places in the metaverse to host healthcare dedicated education centers. And this is very consistent, I think, with sort of the direction that education is going specifically with healthcare, there are some research studies that have come across over the past five years that do suggest a connection between video gamers and higher scores on surgical testing. I'm also just a really big fan of the concept of globally standardized medicine. A lot of us from Western first world nations don't really realize that the global standards for medicinal knowledge and practice, it varies quite a lot in different parts of the world. It's actually kind of scary. And just to add another sprinkle of Kopi conspiracy in there, if you caught the last Kopi Cafe episode, Rob and Josh briefly mentioned something about a partnership with an educational institution that they have not yet announced or talked about yet. Coincidence? Probably, honestly, but still cool to think about. The last thought that I wanna explore in this video is very rooted in Kopi Spiracy, but it's not actually from the Kopi Wiki page. It's actually, again referencing, Kopi Cafe, episode 36. Towards the end of the video, Josh sorted suggesting the possibility that cornucopias might very well be on their way to creating the largest in-game world ever. And just as a side note, that record is currently held by Just Cause 3, released in 2015, and it was a total of 390 square miles, or 110 square kilometers. And just in case anybody out there wasn't bothering to follow Rob's math, the 12 zones alone adds up to an accumulated 768 square kilometers. If you weren't bullish on cornucopias before, you can go ahead and mark today's date down as the day that you realize that cornucopias wasn't just aiming at the title for the biggest metaverse of all time. Try the biggest designed open world game of all time. Then we've got the, and then we've got the, and, and the, and it's bonkers. It's bonkers what's coming. <laughs> In case you didn't quite understand what Rob was doing there, he was censoring himself about three specific undisclosed bodies of land that will add to the overall size of the Cornucopius metaverse. And that is not at all including the 12 zone lands that add up to 768 square kilometers. That's not including any of the mega custom domes. It's not including the custom domes and it's not including any of the home bubbles. And some of us might not realize, even if we're fans of Cornucopius, that we do actually know quite a bit about what Rob was referencing there, or at least I'm, I'm pretty sure I know what he was referencing. First, we've got what is referred to as the city, and it's referenced multiple times throughout the Kopi wiki page, but we don't actually know a lot about it. All we really know right now is that it is some kind of its own dedicated dome that is a metropolitan city within Cornucopius that you'll be able to travel to, just like Zone Lands, and you will be able to buy NFTs within there and build businesses. The second piece of landmass was actually shown to us in Kopi Cafe episode 32, and it's on this map that also shows a path to the city, but it also 
has this landmass around it that is labeled as auxiliary zone. Well, yeah, if if you could kind of see through the land and go behind the land, lower than it, underneath the clouds, mm -hmm. there's a planet there. That's not really a lot of information to go off of, but Rob did explicitly say that below all of the domes, and that includes the zones, the city, it includes the custom domes and the home bubbles, he said that down there, below all of what we know as cornucopias that is just floating up there in the clouds, there is a planet. Any of you that is hearing that information for the very first time after I just said that sentence, you now know just as much as I do about the nature of what's going on down there or what the purpose of this land is. It still has yet to be revealed but, on the map, at least, presumably, there's more landmass down there than there is floating in the sky. So, I don't know. That adds up. I guess it just depends on what Cornucopius decides to build on down there. I'm certain that is, in this stage in the development, even they don't know what they're going to do with that. So... Let's just wait and see. We've still got quite a ways to go before we see anything remotely close to that. But that right there is two out of three of the points that Rob was trying to hide there, which means that the last one is entirely up to conspiracy theories. My personal theory, which I don't think is far-fetched at all, if they're willing to go and explore the space that is below the domes. Why wouldn't they want to go and explore the elements that are above the zones? That could very well be deep outer space and greater planets out there. Seems kind of ambitious, and I'd like to hear about the first planet before I know what's going on with the other planets. But I think probably more likely, the plan as of right now is something a little bit more like a space station out there, or some kind of a home base situation on the moon. If it were me personally, I would probably go with that second option, just so that I could say, Kopi to the moon, without having to cringe about it every time. So that about covers the new updates in 2023 for the gameplay section of the Kopi Wiki page. I'll be able to capture all of the other updates in the future episodes of this Kopi Wiki page deep dive series, but I still want to know what your thoughts are. Are there any updates in this rollout that caught your attention? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of my Cardano-based content every Tuesday and Thursday. As always, remember never to invest more than what you can afford to lose, learn as much as you can about the space, and play for the late game. Thanks so much for watching.